Hello, I'm Steve Rizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix Guide to Sony Movie Studio Platinum as well as the MoviePix Guide to DVD Architect Studio. And here we are in Sony Movie Studio. And if you've used previous versions prior to version 13 of Movie Studio Platinum, you're going to be a little surprised by the new interface. It's very, very different. The buttons are much bigger and brighter. You also have two workspaces. You have an advanced workspace, which is much more like a traditional timeline, a traditional movie studio workspace. And you also have a very simplified workspace. This is called the simple workspace. And in fact, if you didn't buy the Platinum version of the program, if you just bought the basic Sony Movie Studio 13, for instance, you would get only the simple workspace. You don't get the full advanced workspace. So I highly recommend that you go with at least the Platinum version of Sony Movie Studio. It's so much better value and you have so many more options. I'm going to be mostly working in the advanced workspace, but we're going to look at some of the basic things you need to know in order to run this program. So we're going to look at it over the next eight tutorials here and in this very first one we're going to look at starting a project now starting a project seems very basic don't you just open the program and go to work well yes but the more effectively you start your project the more you optimize your project for the media that you're working with the better your workflow is going to be and the better the quality of your results now often when you start up the program by default you get what is called a welcome screen here it is you've seen this and in the welcome screen on the left hand side you'll see some of the recent projects you've worked on you have the option of playing some tutorials or just starting right into the program or creating a new project. We're just going to start right into the program. By the way, if you don't want to see this, you can just uncheck this box, show it startup, and it will go away. But I don't want to start right into editing. What I want to do is I want to consciously start a new project. So to do that, I can either go to the project menu and select new, or I can just click the new project button here in the toolbar at the top of the program. And when I do, I have some options. Now you notice some of these options are for setting up the project based on how you want to output it, whether it's as a DVD or a Blu-ray or an internet video, a Blu-ray 3D. More often, you will set up your projects based on the media that you're editing. And when you do that, you get the most efficient workflow. DV is for working with standard definition video, most often with mini DV or video from a mini DV or tape based digital camcorder. HDV is high definition tape based video and you notice that we have some new additions here. Take a look at those options there on the right and you'll see that we have the option here for 4K. This is brand new since version 13. Uh, we can now edit 4K video which is four times the resolution of high def and that is Sony XAVC video. The program now supports it for bringing it into the program, editing it, and you can even output in 4K. How cool is that? And then we have AVCHD. Most of the editing you're going to be doing, most modern camcorders shoot in AVCHD. Uh, most modern consumer camcorders anyway shoot in AVCHD. It's a high definition format and you see it has both 1440 by 1080 and 1920 by 1080. Don't let that confuse you. Those are both the same resolution essentially. In other words, they're going to produce exactly the same size video. Okay, It's still going to be a 16 by 9 video. Video. One just uses square pixels, one uses non-square pixels. Most of the modern camcorders today are going to be shooting in 1920 by 1080. You'll also want to select whether it's NTSC or PAL and whether it's stereo or 5 to 1 surround sound. Now, if you don't know all these specs, don't worry about it. The program has a really nice feature in here called Match Media Settings. And when you match media settings, all you have to do is select a clip. And we're just going to browse to a clip here that is typical of what's on my camcorder. Just select that clip and click open. And when I do now, it is automatically going to set up my project to match the specs, which as you can see in this particular case, this is 1920 by 1080. It is a high def AVC HD video. Now we can just go to work now, but one of the things I always recommend people do is to manage their project files. It's just a nice, neat housekeeping that the program does for you. It's going to create a lot of temporary files as it's working, and it's nice to put those into a nice, neat folder. Then when you want to clear off your old projects, you don't have to search all over your hard drive for miscellaneous files. They're all in a nice, neat place. And I'm going to name my file here. I'm going to call it reception. And you see that as I type that in there, it automatically creates a subfolder here called reception. And that's where it's going to store my project file along with all of its accompanying files. So I click OK. 
Now we're into the project. By the way, you still have another option here for at any point in the program changing your project properties. And you can do that by clicking on this button here at the upper left of the preview panel. When I click on that, I can select from a drop down list any number of project properties. Or again, I can use Match Media Project Settings or Match Media Video Settings and select a media file and have the program set up the project automatically. There it is, you can see it did it. High Definition 1080 60i based on the media clip I chose. Again, you get the most efficient workflow if you set up your project and base it on what you're using as your predominant video. Do that and the program will work smoothly. You get the most efficient workflow and you get some of the best results too. And here we are, we have set up our project now and we can work on it either in simple or advanced mode. We'll take a look at both those modes a little later and we'll see what some of the advantages and disadvantages of each are. But before we start editing, we've got to get our media into our project. And that's what we're going to do in part two of our eight part series here on basic training with Sony Movie Studio. If you'd like to know more about this great program, be sure to check out the tips and tutorials we have on our website. And if you'd like to know everything about all the tools in this program as well as DVD Architect Studio, be sure to check out our books, the moviepix.com guide to Sony Movie Studio Platinum, as well as the moviepix.com guide to DVD Architect Studio. They're available at Amazon.com and of course right here at the MoviePix site. I'm Steve Grisetti. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again real soon.